Hello and welcome to my Magic the Gathering Practice Makes Progress, where I basically practice and practice and practice because magic requires practice to get better at. Just like anything else that wants to be, uh, you know, a skill base, anything like that, you have your talent, which is just your innate, and then you have to practice to make the innate turn into a great skill. I'm not at great skill yet, but <laughs> I'm fairly certain that I'm doing pretty good. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at where I have missed up. So um, we've been in Bloomboro for a little bit. Uh, as you can see, they're about to release a new set. Don't get me started on that. It's a whole different beast. But I've been able to eke out some time in between other projects that I've been working on to uh, at least move the mastery pass forward. It's obviously not as high as I would have liked from, it, from where I was, but I'm not at one or two, uh, which is good. Um, I at nine where I was able to get a jump in token. One of my hopes is that I'll be able to get to at least um, uh, my my goal currently is to be able to get to twenty right off the bat, so I can get uh, uh, the companion as well as the draft token. And after that, once I reach that, my goal would then to be get by five. So by uh, to be able to get to 25 and then 30 and I'm thinking 30 is a relatively reasonable amount if I'm playing so significantly more often I as much as I would love to get to 40 to get this one I don't know if it's in my range to do so but I definitely will try um, but my goal ultimately is to get to Master Pass 20 before the 14 days is up so to do that you get um, orbs you get it through XP through completing quests weekly, daily is the standard play as well as during certain special events. So one of the special events I am going to be doing at some point, though not at this moment, is um, the quick the quick draft. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a, a video for that one at some point because uh, I have a draft token. Excuse me. So uh, I'm going to be jumping into those at some point to try. Uh, to definitely try my best to be able to get into it and whatnot. So that's on the works uh, for that one. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue getting my dailies. I've been trying to do them every day. It's a little harder um, because uh, I have actually two contracts that I'm working on, so they take up a little bit more time, um, especially with the editing process for recordings. So they, not, not recording, but for like the recording for the project I'm doing, the narration process and whatnot. Um, so they take time to do that, so I haven't been able to be as diligent, especially the month of August when this was released. But now I have a little more time, so I'm hoping in the next two weeks I'll be able to, to do it at least daily to get at least my one of them to reset. Um, I have blue screen spells, red white spells, or green white spells, of which I am uh, proficient more at red green stuff than I am at like all the other colors. So this was kind of healthy for me. So I've been playing for a while in the last week so we're going to try to clear these dailies today to do that i have been using the dynamite deck which i've actually been enjoying and learning about a little bit one of my other videos that i want to be able to do is to create uh, a green white uh, sorry a red a red green deck or even a red black deck with the loom row set card that i have been able to do but i want to do it after i do the draft at least that's my game plan. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do standard play. And then we're going to go with Dynamite. So let's see how I do. My last two matches that I did the other day, or yesterday, when I was trying to clear my dailies, I won the world. Though it was really close. I wish I had recorded them so anyone could see, but my voice was dead tired. <laughs> Okay, so I have Bristling Backwoods right off the bat. I'm definitely going to use that. Dino, uh, Dino, Dino, Dino Thomason is really nice. I like that one. I, however, don't like this hand because I have one card that's a four mana card and only spells and sorcery. So I'm going to mulligan. All right, so I have one of each land, which is good. I have Rumbling Rockside and whatnot to do poison. It's not a bad hand, but it's not great. I can call it on like turn three, which is not too shabby. So I think I'm gonna keep six, and I'm gonna go ahead and relinquish. Pick your poison. 
Though that's a scary one. I like Pick Your Poison a lot. I, it has saved me in a couple of places, but I think I'm going to relinquish that for now to keep my team. So I'm going to put Pick Your Poison back. this time which is a little scary but not too shabby so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to summon armor caller and what I like to do is I like to showcase um, Dan Automaton to gain three lives and if I get another one I just showcase that one again um, it's, uh, Dino Tomaton is kind of like an amazing card to have. If I do get around the building a Dino deck again, um, I should. Okay, so I'm gonna want to use Fist of God, uh, this creature here. Target dinosaur deals damage equal to another power target creature, but this one's five, so it's not great, but. It's not bad either. Let's see. In the presence of ages, reveal the top four cards, put a creature or land on your hand, put the rest in your graveyard. I'm going to do that. I do run the risk of all those lands going away, but I think I'll be all right. Say that with a lot of hesitation. <laughs> I could that could that's one of those gambles that could easily pay off. It's also one of these gambles uh, bringing ranch agent Ceratops to being absolutely terrifying in the long run. really good. The rabbit deck of Bloomboro has been absolutely abysmal. Like, it's like abysmal in like, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, I'm not blocking that. Rumbling rock slide on that valley quest caller because that's a lot of power given to all of those creatures. Yeah, I'm not I'm not playing that game anymore. <laughs> I don't mind attacking with that. Alright, so it does put me at a small disadvantage because they have more creatures than I do and Getting rid of them. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I'm gonna try and gain a life. They have three more mana to be able to pick from, so. Remember, again, I need to use as many spells as I can. That's the goal. Let's see, if I play. Oh, okay, I see. So they're gonna put this one down, and all the others will get one one if it pays four mana. I get. I 
will say it kind of does. I mean, the, 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 the gamble of losing that many lands in that last, um, look at the top four cards of your library, and it's kind of tough. Okay, so, fun story, I can do... Okay, so... I have one, two, three, four, five. I can bring out one, two, three, four, so I can't do that. Okay, so... Paste, when it enters pay two, uh, deals damage to another target creature. I'm gonna get rid of that Warden Elder. to be able to, um, to do that with. I'm going to take care of the Warden, and then I'm going to tackle everything. Because I don't want him to be able to have five mana and be able to tap to get all those creatures plus one. Plus one, one. Anything that keeps it from having that much power, I think is a good thing. He brought it back. <laughs> well, <Wild> darn. <laughs> Probably should have seen that coming. It was worth a shot. It would have been bad, though, if he had two on the field. That would have been terrible. All right, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and use Vampaging Tricer uh, Ceratops next. Can do that, that can be pretty bad. Against this, I feel like removal spells are the best call. So we'll be neck and neck for a while if this keeps up. Actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. They gain menace. I think I'd rather do Menace and... No, I don't. It's just they have one mana and, and tank and, and one mana and, ta and tap. This one is three mana and tap, which they have all the mana to be able to give. Yep, plus one one, and then they'll tap if they're. Yep, they'll have one more, so they will. One, two. Oh no, they don't. Just kidding, they need four mana. I read that incorrectly. So they can do that, and then they can hit me. I'm surprised they didn't do this one instead of that one. They can do it great, but this would have been this cleric to get them all to hit for that much. That would have been way better. I gotta know that I'm gonna target that creature, right? <laughs> I, I'll block like this one right here <laughs> and I'm okay with that <laughs> I don't know what he has he's got, two, he's got three mana left over if he's got some sort of spell to do something to my cherry top that would suck a lot Yeah, I'm not stressing over that. Okay, 
Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna cast, um... Exact Talisman. This one already has, can't be blocked by, except by three or more creatures, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste my... something. At least one of his creatures should block this. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Take out the Warden Elder, which, like I said, he would have hit me really hard if he had used that. all those creatures because am i am, am i wrong hexproof i thought was against wards and stuff like that not against direct attacks also how do i see how did i see what just got played oh here they gain hexproof a player player with a perm or permanent with hexproof can't be the target of spells or abilities they got hit they got hit regardless what do you mean i what are you talking about all right, that is going to be 100% a Drake question because hexproof means they can't be spells or abilities. I just, oh. If the gift was promised. Oh, they got indestructible. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Because literally all I saw was the symbol and I was, and now I was just like, why would, it, why would hexproof protect it? I was gonna say, just hit me with everything you got. <laughs> I'm fairly certain you can probably take me out this one run. Yeah. You resolve everything. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I was like, I think you can hit me with that one ability alone. from the red spells. Ah, oh, fiddles. Let's do it again. Like I said, I, my goal is to get rid of at least one in this run. the bird. 
in a rock and a hard place now. I'm like, okay. Just that, just having Incubus talent right off the bat really, like, blows a lot. And grumbling rock slide is only a sorcerer. the right move, but I didn't want to waste the Dynatomaton um, abilities. This is why, like, I'm playing the Dino Mike from, the, I can't remember which, which set it's from, but I'm playing the Dino, Dino Mike, right? Um, this, like, for example, here, as powerful as this card is, it's only powerful when you need it, right? When you have it. But even without it, the it, the Bloomboro set is really well grounded, in my opinion. This is going to put me at a boost advantage. A pretty bad one, unfortunately. It's just... It's not a target of a spell, so that's fine. Okay, I'm hoping, okay, I'm hoping that I can still do this, and it will work. Okay, cool. Uh, that Innkeeper's talent is a annoying enchantment that the green color has. I want to. That is my one thing. I'm trying to play the, the the gift buff so I can see it in action. Where is this fish? What what am I getting gifted? <laughs> what does gift of fish mean? Take 
Earthshaker, because drawing a card is... Mm. No. Done. Like that. <laughs> I like drawing a card too, but having that first main phase, having two extra mana right off the bat is... Attack with much fear and trepidation. That's so broken that Innkeeper's Talent is terrible. Hexproof, they're Ward 1, which is madness. So my Lama doesn't get hit by 7. Gamble. Fun story of doing things in the wrong order. This be one of those. This is this is one of those. I'll see if I can. This is one of those. I made an incredible, egregious error just now, and I hope I can rectify it. considering I was like maybe I should just quit now you know I'm like maybe I can maybe I can fix this the answer is no I probably can't just based off of this but I am gonna cast my spell 100% I need that spell to be cast so I can get my daily <laughs> He's like, no, I need this. I'm always going to use that one. Okay, you can hit me now. After you. <laughs> okay, I'm not waiting around for you to... I, I'm clearly not going to hit you right now. I'm not waiting for you to cast that many. Red or white spells uh, taken care of. And now I just have to do uh, green spells. I have white green or blue green. If I wanted, I could probably just do a mono green deck um, with green spells. Or I can do one of these two. I don't play well with the other two. Red green was great because I was like, I can get this one. Alright, 
So I got those two. So we're at 11 now. So the next one we're going to aim for is getting on this pacemaker. I like it. Yeah, it's a shabby. Okay, so let's do, um, let's see. I have 11 out of 20 for green-white. Let's just play a green-white deck and see what I come up with. So let's switch it out. Let's do Saddle Up. Right, what's in this deck? This deck has Acrobatic Leaps, Steer Clear, Ankle Biter, Cooped Up, Enchantment. You know, I'll do it when I see it. Alright, let's standard play with Saddle Up. Now to think about it, I probably could have just waited for that guy to take me out. Because everyone, everyone was trying to get their dailies done, so that was mean of me. I probably should have let him take his time. But I got things to do. <laughs> Alright, we have uh, one instant, a two-level creature, that's 3-3, three, three, uh, one white, one black creature, and a level 5. I'm okay with this. Let's keep that up. Target opponent. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. Alright, right. we have when it attacks while saddled, which is like it is not saddled. Okay, so I have human scout. Saddle, tap any number of other creatures you control the total power with a total power four or more. It becomes saddle until end of turn. It's only as a sword fix. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. As long as you have a power it can attack as though it didn't have defense. Ah! Wait! No! <laughs> done that before, where I'm just like, actually, I need to leave right now. I will take my XP. I will take my XP. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. Let's see, I casted... How did I... Wait, how did I cast... How did I cast two? Didn't I have 11 out of 20? Am I making that up? Okay, well, apparently I cast something and I don't know what it was. Let's try again. Instant, a legendary creature, which I will read later. Founding Feldar, which is for six. Ankle Biter, and I'll keep seven. Founding Feldar, I hope I will get to it. Yes, you are. I have a colleague that absolutely, like, loathes burning, uh, evolving land, evolving wilds, I should say. <laughs> They were like, ah, I can't do any of this. And I was like, just evolving wilds is great. You just see a lot of it. <laughs> okay, token. Let's do angle light then. Cooped up, a chance to feature, it can't attack or block. Okay. It's like half the line. Steed. When Fortune uh, enters Scrapper 2, uh, whenever attacks Saddle, because it's a mount, 
Exile up to one creature that saddled it this turn, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Saddled up one. This sounds like a vehicle, but not. I almost try anyway. with a deck that I've never done with before, so forgive me if I'm testing the waters for things. Additional three, you cast a spell if you do it, commit the creature. This one's at the beginning, surveil, threshold, as long as you have seven in your graveyard. Okay. Exile it and up to one creature that saddled the descendant return those cards to the battlefield under their owner control. Let's see what happens if I do that. Steer clear deals doom damage to understand what I just did. I may have to go back and watch the video to see what it was I did exactly. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was cool though. I, I'll watch the playback to make sure I know what I did. <laughs> okay. I am so unfamiliar with white deck. Oh my gosh. Okay, what is this? Vigilance. Vigilance. It can't be. This one cannot be blocked. Whenever it attacks, up to one target creature and opponent controls loses all your abilities till next turn. If it's a creature, it loses base toughness. Uh, can I just. Can I just scoop that up? Like that? Can I just do that? Alright, it can't do nothing, and then I can exile it next turn. For three. Uh. Okay. Right, right. Okay. 
I think I'm getting I think I'm getting the hang of what that means. My goal is to just learn to be better. That's fine. Okay, so this is target creature you control gets plus one one until the end of turn. It was a mount. Then it deals damage equal to its power to the target creature you control. So if I'm gonna cast a spell, I'm gonna be like, yeah. I do like this onto a mount, then I damage that, and that, and then I can do that. I can do this. Okay. I just wanted to get rid of that one creature. End turn. Alright, so be able to check. Saddle, tap any number of creatures you control with a total power of one or more. Okay, so this mount is... No, that's not a mount. This mount is saddle two. It has a total power of two. Whenever I go to block something, but I... all right, now I can cast this, and I can cast this. Scout with mount. Mount my beast mount. I think that makes sense. Okay, so now if I attack with that creature. It's gonna get blocked it. Okay, but that, all right, now I see, now I see. I'm on all cylinders now, I'm on all cylinders now.
No cars in his hands, so unless there's an activation that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, we took 10 in the graveyard, so all this fresh work. Yep. So if I attack. Right? While saddled, three attackers get one one life counter on everyone. You gain life each of those features. Oh, that's deadly. Look at that. Oh, that's deadly. Oh, my. Oh, that's just devastating. If I can hold out for that, that's just terrifying. Oh, my goodness. If I hold out, <laughs> that's a horrid. Oh, I don't like that card. But that's a horrid card to fight against. This bounding Right, remember, they can't be blocked because they hit the threshold. So, we're at the who's going to hit first. Can I activate the ability? Now that I know, I should definitely put it on this. This guy right here. This is terrible. Anyway, so if I saddle again with this creature, top submit, now it's saddled, I go to attack, I get three attackers, the other creature gets plus one one, he's gonna block with that probably for my railway brawler, yeah, with death touch. sacrifice to take and each of us is now at the point where we're drawing cards I think that he's going to hit me for four each round so I now have a bear amount actually I think instead of mounting it, I'll attack with all three. Cause he's got a block with two. Oh wait. So he's got a 2-4 and a 2-4. I'm thinking I'll... Oh, yeah, I'll attack with just my Founding Feldar. See what happens. Gave him minus one one. Got it, got it, got it. Now we're literally in heart of the cards <laughs> territory. Like, what do you got? I have no cards. You are on draw every time. They can't be blocked. They can't I can't block that mouse though.
last little bit here. <laughs> let's let's all attack everyone. Let's see what we got. They got to block with they got to block with something. Alright, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> that was a good match. I actually thought maybe we might have drawn something, but that was not bad. I liked it. <laughs> oh, we got through it. I was a little worried for a second, but we did get through it. And I got my second daily for it. And we're up one mastery. Okay, with that, I have six more to get one more daily done. I'm trying to decide if I have the brain to do it right now. Not like the brain, but... Uh, what's the word? To, you know, just kind of like... Because what I usually do is I'll play for like, a, like 30 minutes to an hour, get my dailies going, and then keep like learning through it and stuff like that. We're at the almost the hour mark, so I'm kind of like... All right, what else do I need to do today um, and whatnot? So I think uh, just for that in tow, I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably do this, uh, you know, off video and stuff like that just to get it out the way with the, with the same deck. Uh, that being said, that is our current practice makes per not perfect. It makes progress. <laughs> Perfection is great, but ultimately what we always want is progress no matter what. So that's why it's Magic the Gathering practice makes progress. Um... Oh, there is one thing I do want to do at the end here. So I have a bunch of, um, I have a bunch of decks to open. Um, so I'm actually going to open um, some of them. I'm still leaving murder. I know, I know. I like Drake and I have these great plans for how to like what we're going to do with the murders of Carl offset here. So please ignore it. But we will open Walls of Eldrain to the guest. Uh, so we have Candy Grapple, uh, excuse me, Bargain, Sacrifice an art uh, Artifact, Enchantment, or Token to cast a spell. Uh, we have the other ones, Intent Bonus Sheets. I like this color. I like this. It's very pretty. It's plus one one head vigilance. We got Woodland Acolyte, Instant Adventure. Uh, put permanent card from the graveyard to the top of your library. And then when it enters, draw a card. And then for rare, we got Sir Ginger. <gasps> Isn't that puppet? From Shrek the Musical. I absolutely will sing Sir Ginger's Meal like he's the ginger man, the gingerbread man from Shrek. <laughs> you know? We've got our whole life wishing. We weren't so freaking strange. They made us feel that way. And then tramples everything as I sing Freak Flag Fly. Anyway, so there you have it. We have that creature. Continue on. Uh, I appreciate you all listening to my rantings. <laughs> we have Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Not nearly as fun as the gingerbread man singing. Where's your freak flag race? Alright, we have Hunter's Blowgun. Death Touch. Let's see, equip it. It gets Death Touch during your turn. It, otherwise, it has Reach. And it gets 1-1. One, one. And we have Hidden Necropolis. Ooh, I have seen this card. Um, I like it. The Discovery is pretty cool to watch. Um, Malamet Brawler. Uh, let's see. It gains... Attacking, cre attacking creature gains trample until end. I guess that means another attacking creature. Oh, no. It's target... Target attack... Bleh. When it attacks, target attacking creature gains trample till end because if he's attacking the opponent is blocking so it can't be talking about that so it must be talking about another i'll have to see it in action all right sorcerer's spyglass artifact looks at an opponent's hand choose any card name activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities and then our rare we got squirming emergence fathomless descent return 
to the battlefield. Target non-land permanent card in your graveyard with a mana value less than or equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. Interesting. I can see this working really, really well with um, the deck that I just played. All right, and currently my personal favorite set of all the sets I've played in Magic, Bloomboro. Uh, we will open them up. Let's see. We have Splash 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 Splash. My narration prior is going great. Yes, sir. Let's see. We have the Splash Splash Er Head of the Homestead. Let's see. Rush uh, Rush Rough. Shad du Rashad. <laughs> Rashad duo. Uh, Sonar Strike. Drift Gloom Coyote. And for our rare, for the common good, create X tokens that are copies of the target token you control. Then tokens you control gain indestructible till end your next turn. You gain one life for each token you control. Green White Rabbit. Immediately thought Green White Rabbit. That Those rabbit sets are terrifying. Got Blooming Blast, Gift of Treasure, which I'm still not understanding the gifting process. I have encountered it several times now, and I still don't actually understand it. What am I gifting? Where is the gift? Who I'm on the receiving end. I have received no gift. You just say gift. So I'm still learning the gifting process because to me that mechanic is probably the only one that I'm really kind of flummoxed about because I'm not sure I understand why it exists. You know? Like sometimes you can like you can see like um, like flash, uh, cast a spell at any time you could cast an instant. Which, to be perfectly honest, I feel like people were running out of ideas for how to create new mechanics for it. And I was like, all right, fine. You can flash at any time you could cast an instant, which is just an instant with an extra spark. Right? Like I said, practice makes progress. So some of the progress is still trying to take time to understand why something has to be a certain way. Because people like Flash, they like I know Drake sometimes like, oh I love the Flash. The kickback is the one I understand the most, as well as Flash Back. Flash is just instant with like a pizzazz. Anyway. We got Mist Breath Mist Mist Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be an excellent narrator. I just say that. Mist Breath Elder. At the beginning of your upgrade, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on this Elder. Otherwise, you may return it to its owner's hand. Whoever's in charge of writing the rules... Sure. Here's... Here you go. Druid of the Spade. We got Shore Up. Blue card. We have um, uh, Uncommon Wild. We got Moonstone Harbinger, which I've seen. It's pretty cool. And then for there, we got... Lizard. I love the lizard deck in red. It's so great. Gev Skeld Scorch Ward Pay to Life. Yes, yes. This is if I create a red black deck, this is one hundred percent going in. Other creatures you control enter with an additional one one counter on them for each opponent who lost a life this turn. Whenever you cast Gelf's lizard spell, Gev gets one damage to each target opponent. Now that's what I'm talking about. Lizards are my spirit animal for the Bloomboro deck. All right, we have the new one is Vine Trap uh, Mentor. Uh, when it enters or dies, create a food token. So you get two when it enters and when it dies. Lupin, um, Lupin Flower Village. How pretty! Who, who's the artist? Alana Donner. That's very Alina. 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 I apologize uh, if I'm mispronouncing the name. Uh, but it's very pretty. The artwork is, is very, very pretty. Um, I love contrasting light darks. And then for our man, another mist breath, mist, mist breath, another mist breath elder. Mist breath elder. I had a sentence that I was narrating. I had to record it for like five minutes, just with the word like sunshine, sunshine, and like wish, waspish, waspish. I never heard the word before. I saying it is super tough. <laughs> I 
right, we got Pearl of Wisdom and Patchwork Banner. And lastly, for our rare, we have Thorn Vault Forager, Squirrel Ranger. Uh, tap add a mana, tap and forage. Forage being to exile three cards from your graveyard or sacrifice a food. Um, you add two mana. For three mana and a tap, search your library for a squirrel card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay, okay. And that is our Master Pass uh, pack opening. Anything fun in the store today? Go to deal. I love Grizzled Dead. I love Grizzled. Um, I love the I love bear, bear decks. So like this one, Professor Zumancy, uh, Dover Grizzled, <laughs> um, the Gore Claw, which I don't actually like nearly as much because it's a little too much for me. Um, but yeah, Were Bear. Oh yeah, I love I love this. So I might end up at least maybe purchasing one or two of the bears here, but I like this one, so I'm definitely gonna. Um, Bear Druid's one of my favorites, so I'm definitely gonna get that one. Uh, you, you can now see my purchasing. I know, I know, I don't care. It's fine. I love it. I love the bears. I can't. I want to have them all. Anyway, I do like the bear decks. I'm surprised. I, I, I have one. Drake created a commander deck. Uh, called Baron Brawl, which I've been trying to make here, but like I have to craft some of the cards, so I have to accumulate wild cards to craft them with. So I think I can craft it now. So I'll showcase it one day and show you what Drake thinks my Baron Brawl deck means to me. How I he how he perceives how I play this game. Okay, so with that, now I will go ahead and officially end. Thank you all very much for joining. I look forward to doing another um, Magic the Gathering Practice Makes Progress video, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.